Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the second episode of Sound Design for Visual Media. In this video, we're gonna talk about importing a video and we're gonna talk about optimizing our workflow when we're working with films, both with screen sets, some extra actions. Also, every video will come with a blog post on my website, the link of which you can find in the description. And there you will find all the notes from the episode. You will find extra downloadable material like templates and custom actions and things like that. And you will also find links to extra study materials Material if you want to dive deeper in some of the topics that I'm covering here I suggest that you check those out in the blog post for this episode I will also include all my templates for download However, my templates may not be perfect for you before you get into any kind of sound editing job You will be having a conversation with the mixer of that project and that mixer may have their own kind of Preferences as to how they want the tracks delivered to them. Do they want 16 mono SFX tracks and 8 stereo tracks? Maybe they want 32 two SFX with 16 of them stereo and 16 mono. Maybe they want just four production audio dialogue tracks. So there's a lot of ways from mixer to mixer. It may be different how they expect their deliveries to be. However, the way that I'm using is pretty kind of standard in North America at least. You can definitely download my template and you can then kind of customize it your own way. Add your own plugins to the tracks, change the color, change their layout, whatever you want to do. Could be a good starting point. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so here we are in a new project project it has my original template tracks which we covered earlier and now i want to bring in a video so i'm just gonna click on the video and i'm gonna bring it into my video track now i'll also show you really quickly if you want to burn time code onto a video how to do that so i'm gonna put a video processor in here and i got the tc burner script now i found this on the reaper forums so i'll paste the link to where you can get it as well that will be in the blog post as well we're gonna come and change the offset of these until it's the correct number now if you don't know how time code works i highly encourage you to do some studying in that area i will kind of discuss it in more detail in my blog post as well definitely also make sure you know the difference between production audio time code versus post-production time code in post-production time code when we already have like an edited cut of the movie that we're working on we always start the time code at 01000000 whereas here the time code has been burned at 000000 so if your video doesn't have time code or if the time code is in any way incorrect or not the way you like it you can use this script i also always put it on my top right the reason i put it up top is sometimes you may be working in a post-production theater and if you're sitting behind the mixing desk it's kind of hard to see the bottom of the screen but you always see the top of the screen and the time code is our way of making sure our edits make sense and uh, that when somebody imports our audio it will go to the same place as it was in our project and also when we're spotting the video it's our way of going to one specific part of the track and uh, talking to the director about it. But anyway, I have my time code at 1000. So now I got to bring my video to here so I can select the item, press one, press E, and then it comes here. That is the action move selected items to edit cursor. Now it's at zero one. You can make a copy of it because I want the audio separately on my guide track. Because if you're using the audio directly from your video track, well, if you mute the guide track audio, you will also lose your video. I can also then glue my guide track. And when you glue a video track, you're just left with the audio. So as you can see, no video on that track. You can also ignore audio in this track. And then I want my video not to move and my guide track not to move. I don't want to accidentally click on it and put them out of whack so I can also lock them both I have the control L hot key to item properties lock so now they're locked and they're not going anywhere I can also hide my video track so these are a set of actions that I do every single time so what I can do is make a custom action that does all of this at once I've already created this custom action so right now I'm going to select my video and hit it and a bunch of things happens which now we're going to look at in my custom action called video import clericals it starts by going to marker 1 and moving the selected items to the edit cursor. So all I got to do for this action to work is simply to have my video on track 1 and have it selected before I run this. Then it moves the selected item to edit cursor, which is on marker 1, which is on 1000000. Then it duplicates the item, selects track 2 and moves that duplicate to selected track. Then it selects the first item on the selected track, which is that duplicated track, goes to marker 1 and moves it to marker 1. Next, it will select track 1 again. It will disable the master 
their parents send on that track so that's another way of not getting your audio from the video to play won't send it to the master track then it will select the first item of that track it would lock it then it would hide the track in tcp and mixer so i don't need to see my video track anymore next it will select track two it will select the first item on the selected track which is our guide track audio it would glue it and when you glue a video track you are just left with the audio track video can't be glued it just can't be rendered then it will lock that also then it will move the cursor to the end of that item and it would insert a marker at the edit cursor with the custom name and color and that marker is lfop which is in gray and lfop stands for last frame of picture and ffoa stands for first frame of action i will also just browse through my track and make sure my time code here and my time code here makes sense together um i'll even disable snap and go to some random places yep 4521 4521 they totally work together and now we're ready to rock and roll as it were so I'm gonna hide this again. So I wanna talk a little bit about screen sets. So if you don't know, if you hit Command and E, you will come to this window. If you are if you worked in Pro Tools, it's the same as configurations. This is basically a way for me to save the overall look of my uh, Reaper. So for example, my first one is my main editing. The load key for it is Shift F7. So if I load it, this is kind of the way I edit music, right? So big timeline small mixer on the side if i click on any track that will go to the mixer and master track is always shown and this is how i work on music now if i'm when i'm working on music i can always go command option v and i'll bring my video track and then i can put it somewhere but this is pretty annoying you know what if i want to work here right i don't want to all the time have to like move this around if i zoom in now this is in the way of this track right this is just not the way to work so i have a video editing screen set and if i load it it looks like this. Now this will be familiar to anybody who's ever done video editing. That's usually what video editing software looks like. This is my screen set. You can have your own screen set the way you want it. But basically, if you ever want to save any screen set, you just, you can open all kinds of windows. You can have your master or maybe you don't like your mixer there. You can close these and then you can go to command and E and then you can save your configuration on any which one that you want. So I save it whenever in my project, let's say I'm working on music. Whenever I load this screen set, it would look the way that I designed it. So this is how my uh, video editing kind of main looks like. Uh, I have my automation types here. That's for mixing. I have my effects browser up here because I can easily drag from up here to any track. And I have my track manager. So if I want to show a track that I've hidden before, or if I want to check the processing delay of each track, I can do it from there. I can also show and hide uh, tracks from the mixer as I want. So that's my track manager. In the middle, I have my video and I have my performance bar. If my project starts running slow, I can kind of find the culprit here, right? So I can just sort by CPU use. Right now, there's nothing on my project. So monitoring effects is actually taking the most amount of resources. But if you have a bunch of tracks and a lot of them have a bunch of plugins on them and things like that, this is a quick way of identifying which tracks are taking up the most CPU. And then, you know, if you're not using them, you can disable them for now, or you can freeze tracks that are taking up a lot of CPU and just free up a little CPU. For yourself this is my region and marker manager my actions list is up here and my media explorer is up here for when i want to import sound effects finally on the side i have my mixer i also have another one that's very useful and the hotkey for that i have set is Control shift and f9 that's for midi editing so when i'm midi editing again i have my timeline here i have my video on the side so i can very quickly do my midi editing and sync it to picture if i need to yeah so when i'm working with video usually i'm switching between shift and f9 which is my video editing control shift and f9 which is for midi editing to video and then shift and f7 which is my normal arrange and i do sometimes just come back to that so that's a little bit on screen sets again i encourage you to get your screen sets the way you like it the way you're comfortable working if you have two screens you can make your own screen sets i actually do have two screens and i still use one screen because it would have a non-zero effect on big projects and i'm honestly comfortable working on one screen if you're not you know what to do organize your view across two screens or three screens whatever you got and then save them as screen sets and then you can quickly switch between them i usually don't like to have a save hotkey for these things because i don't want to accidentally save them or overwrite my uh, screen sets that i spent a really long time creating and kind of perfecting so i have my loads if i ever want to save it hit command e 
come here and I can just click on any one and save it. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Sorry about the audio levels being all over the place. I kind of didn't notice that my initial recording was clipping a little bit and then I was too lazy to redo it. And then I did redo a little part of it, but my partner was asleep. So I kind of recorded that part a little more quietly. So, you know, not the best endorsement for somebody who's teaching sound design, but usually I'm more careful with this stuff. It just happened this one time. I was in a hurry. In the next episode, we're going to spot a video. I am stalling a little bit because I'm still looking for appropriate videos that I can teach sound design with that won't get my channel flagged for copyright infringement. So I found some Creative Commons videos that I may use. I'm also in the process of securing the permission from some short films and animations and documentaries for various episodes. And overall, it's not too bad that we're not diving straight into sound design. I think this stuff that we're discussing is important, how time code works, um, you know, how to optimize your workflow because with an optimized workflow, you make the sound design part more fun. So this stuff really helps and I hope it helps you. Uh, I hope you get to use it. After spotting a video, we're probably in the episode after that, gonna go out in the field, do some field recordings. Then I'll talk about how I master my field recordings in Reaper and then uh, we'll take it from there. It's gonna be a fun ride, so stay tuned. Next video next Wednesday. Meanwhile, watch my one minute tutorials every day. Do all the liking and subscribing and blah, blah, blah that YouTube wants you to do. It'll be helping me out. See you later.